I'm Dan Shively. I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I serve as the Pacific Region's Fish Passage and Habitat Partnerships Coordinator, and I oversee the FRIMA program. FRIMA, which stands for the Fisheries Restoration and Irrigation Mitigation Act, began from legislation in the year 2000. This voluntary and non-regulatory program provides federal funding to screen water diversions allowing irrigators and water users to meet their water needs while providing safe passage for fish. Prior to the act, many water diversions were unscreened and fish would swim freely into them. Because of this, fish would end up in irrigation canals and couldn't make it back to their stream of origin, posing a threat to the population's sustainability. Throughout much of the Northwest, there are a number of fish species in decline and in need of conservation and recovery. In early September of 2010, a group of partners reviewed several successful FRIMA projects in Oregon. This tour demonstrated how irrigators, farmers, and other water users can cost share with the federal government to provide safe and effective fish passage at their facilities. FRIMA has allowed uh, Oregon to really be in the forefront of addressing fish screening and fish passage needs in Oregon across the state, uh, especially on these larger, more complex, more expensive projects that uh, are sometimes in the millions of dollars you know, to find uh, you know, protection for our fish and provide passage to uh, upstream areas. The screen that was installed here is a horizontal fish screen. It's called the Farmer Screen. It's a screen technology that was invented by Farmers Irrigation District in Hood River, Oregon and licensed to us, Farmers Conservation Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization. The benefits of this screen are that it's horizontal, has no moving parts, and requires very little maintenance. It's substantially self-cleaning, so it will self-clean under most conditions. Um, sites like this that are remote, this is about four miles up a very narrow gravel road, have no power sources, and so most other screen types require some kind of power to clean it. This screen hydraulically cleans, so water moves across the screen surface at a really high rate, uh, of speed, about four to eight feet per second. Goes over the top of the screen, fish sticks, leaves, debris, and sediment all move over the top of the screen, drop off the screen into a channel and return back to Crabtree Creek. The irrigation water falls down through the screen really slowly at about a tenth of a foot per second. Flows over a weir wall and into the irrigation uh, district's canal. There's still a number of diversions in Oregon that are currently unscreened and some not providing passage. A lot of these projects are, are, are quite expensive to implement. Uh, with the additional FREMA uh, allocations, we'd be able to provide more incentive to water users to bring all of their, their diversion structures up to compliance with current screening and passage criteria that provides them their opportunity to get all the water that they deserve and use and also provides fish the opportunity to continue on to continue their lifespan, uh, keeps fish out of the canals, allows fish to pass these structures and go up and spawn. At the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we're working towards creating a greater awareness of the substantial number of remaining barriers and water diversions that still need to be addressed. In addition, we're conducting research along with our partners to identify the needs for safe passage of fish species other than salmon and trout, such as lamprey, which we believe is critical in addressing conservation needs. Uh, lamprey juveniles tend to be very small, and that is a real problem with trying to get them around these kinds of screens. Um, we would like to see improvements in those kinds of issues and some consideration for lamprey as they pass downstream to the ocean so they can make it back. Hopefully the, the FRIMA uh, program can continue on into the future because there are way, way too many uh, project sites or diversion sites in the Willamette that are, you know, either um, privately owned or local government and the funding just isn't there, um, the, the interest uh, uh, is, isn't there without an outside funding source. So um, I, think, I think we need uh, more of, of these types of projects to, to help protect the salmon and other aquatic species. We've already implemented many FRIMA projects in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and western Montana, providing benefits to both fish and water users. However, there are tens of thousands of diversions that still remain. There couldn't be a more pressing time to restore connectivity and safe passage for fish here in the Northwest. 
we hope to continue to build successful relationships with farmers and water users while addressing the critical need to provide safe passage for Northwest salmon, lamprey, and other species.